All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from, well, this time a wet, windy and wild San Diego. Uh, and today I'm delighted to be joined by David Fischette, who is in Nashville, Tennessee. How are you doing, David? I'm doing very well, John. Thanks for uh, having me on today. Yeah, and David is the founder, CEO, and chief creative at Go West Creative, an industry-leading marketing agency specializing in bringing brand stories to life. He's helped hundreds of organizations, including giants like United Nations, HB, Deloitte, CVS, Salesforce, DuPont, and many more. And what we want to talk about today is lessons learned about building a brand from over three decades of experience helping major brands communicate their message to key stakeholders, and why brand storytelling is the future of of marketing so maybe we just start there david in terms of when you say brand storytelling being the future of marketing what are most people doing today in relation to what they should be doing well i think um what we're finding is you know today's today's world we even pre-pandemic we were mm -hmm. already leaning towards a, a deep desire for to connect authentically, yeah. right, right. Um, it, it is now, you know, so so much more important post pandemic, right? Because yeah, suddenly we, we we all discovered humanity uh, a few years ago. Uh, but but now people, you know, it's it's so important to have a an authentic connection to the audience because they can they can sniff out when you're just selling something, right? So, so often brands will, uh, you know, try to be something that they're not right. It, it, because another brand is doing it. So, um, let, let's, let's do that mm -hmm. as opposed to who, who are we really, who are we authentically and how do we express that in a way that draws people to us? Right. And so I think, you know, through the, the whole concept of brand storytelling, uh, you know, that, that is, you know, to me, that's the stickiness is right. You, you know, um, um, we, we work with a, uh, a spoken word artist, and we do a, we have a, a product called Spoken Cinema, and the, the great Steve Connell is, is this artist that we work with. And it was so amazing is that so often we'll do a discovery call with the client to, to get all the initiatives about the the brand and the things that they do and the things that they sell, and right, right. And then when he comes back with a piece that he's written, it'll be like. I remember sitting on my grandfather's lap and looking at his hands and he was the bridge builder. And it's like, it has nothing to do with who the client is, but it just draws sure. you in story. And then you tie the parallel back. Right. And you, and, and, and then, and then, and the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the points all align. And then, you know, then you, that goodwill and that, that interest that you get from the story gets pulled into your product, your services or your brand ultimately. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I agree with you. I think uh, the pandemic, uh, if there's any silver lining from it, maybe was that it people rediscovered their their that they needed relationships, that they needed human to human connection. And also, if you think, I mean, I'm originally Irish. I'm from Ireland, and like, and our whole culture is a, is a storytelling. The whole history of our, you know, handed down through storytelling, and that's for most cultures in many ways. So it's a very innate thing within us, anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know, so we, uh, we have a, a piece that we created, um, you know, uh, through spoken cinema called "The Origin of Story," and then we 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 take it all the way all the way back to, you know, cave dwellings, right? And then, yeah. and then what, what I love about that piece is like, you know, it's all about you know the first first guys and they figure out and they discover fire and it's like, oh, we can have heat and we can cook meat and this is what a wonderful thing this will be, right? And then the guy next one was like. Yeah, you, you sell the fire. I'm going to sell the story because everybody's going to want to hear about that, right? So right. the first brand marketer, right? You know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> No, I, I love that. And I love that analogy. And I always think it's funny you talking about cavemen. It's like thinking like you got hieroglyphics and now we're back to uh, emojis. So, you know, that's how right. far we've, that's how far we've progressed. Full circle. <laughs> all that, John, full circle. Yeah, absolutely. So how, when you, when you work with organizations, because I, I feel this is because we've come up through a lot of, you know, traditional ways of, of marketing and positioning and everything. When you work, work with organizations today, how do you help draw out their story? Because sometimes like the story, which you ultimately probably get is very different from where they think they are, or they don't think they have a, a real story. 
Right. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it, it, it comes down to listening, right? Listening to mm -hmm. who they think they are, who they think they are in the market, and then also listening to the consumer and who they think the that, that brand is, right? And find, drawing, drawing the line and, and, and being bold enough to talk to a client about what the audience might be thinking, right? As opposed to what they um, are thinking about themselves, right? And we run into this issue uh, often, right? Where um, you know, even when you're talking to an internal audience, say a client is talking to an internal audience, mm -hmm. They maybe forget what it is that they said last year, right? Yep. And, and right because they've they've had you know seventy meetings since the last since I gave that presentation at this same meeting last year, right? And so their story may have changed or developed or new things have been added, blah blah blah. But they just feel like it, you know you know a lot of times they think hey, well we're just picking up from everybody gets where I'm at today. And it's right. like, no, there, there's been a progression here. And how do we bring people into that story and, and help them understand that? So there's, there's so many different facets to this whole idea of storytelling, both, you know, big brand consumer facing internal facing mm -hmm. stories that, you know, that you tell your, your, your internal team, your executive team, the term, the, the team, the story you tell your, 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 your larger team, the story you tell your consumers, right? And, you know, and the, the best brands have a congruent story that goes all the way through. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, it's interesting what you said, like about that we often assume that the story internally, even that we assume that the story landed the first time and mm -hmm. that people got it. Maybe we did it, as you said, maybe we had a presentation and everybody went away, but we, I guess part of this is how you evolve that story, but also how you make sure that it's internalized by by everybody in the organization because you can't communicate it externally unless you everybody is really on the same page now, particularly because there are so many different touch points to prospective customers. Absolutely. And, and perspective is key. And that's, that's, that's a great word. We're actually working with a client right now and their the theme is about shifting perspectives. And even though they've got a new message and a new CEO that, that they'll be rolling out his view, you know, the, the, the thought of a, of a new perspective is that whatever it is you're saying to me, I, I hear that, but I'm hearing it through a lens of 58 years, 58 mm -hmm. and a half years of my life. And what, you know, certain things are going to stick and certain things are going to resonate with me and certain things are going to repel me. Right. So it's like everybody has then receives what you're saying through their own perspective yeah. too. So, so interesting, you know, we, we work, um, you know, uh, the, the lion's share of our business is centers around very large, uh, uh, you know, corporate events and virtual events and broadcasts and, and things like that. And, you know, um, when you, when you go to the big convention, that's got, you know, 2000, 5,000, 10,000 people at it, there's always some sort of a big kickoff to the opening, right? There's you know, what we call that, that, that wow moment. And so often I, I go to these <laughs> conventions that we're not producing, all right? And you see these big elaborate openings that have nothing to do with the message, nothing to do with mm -hmm. the brand, right? And do nothing to like shore up story, right? Whereas, you know, when we're thinking of, about anything that we do with a client, whether that's the opening or there's video content, whether it's a stage design or the headline entertainment, it's like, how is this in service of your message? How is this in service of your brand? And how is this in service of the theme? How does it support? Because what you don't want is you want people to walk away from one of these large events going, oh my gosh, that thing was so cool. And the guy repelled down from the ceiling and he, you know, he's <laughs> gonna jump out and whatever it is. And it's like, well, cool, what they talk about? I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so it's like, how, how do you make all those things? How do you tie all that goodwill back to the three key things, whatever it is you want people to walk away thinking, feeling, doing you know, very Disney. Yeah. And, and I, I really, um, I couldn't agree with you more. Actually, I was at a conference last week. I won't name it just, but a bit, but I just say that conferences are so, the, the format is so tired at this stage for most of them. Like it's the same old format. Like you go, you go kind of excited and then you go to the keynote and then it just goes breakouts and then, and, and it just, peters out to the point that by the if it's a three-day conference by the third day you're like no, i'll just stay in my hotel room and do work get some work done yeah yeah <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's constant yeah it's the thing you're always fighting against right so how do you how do you design even even when you look at a three-day conference how do you look mm -hmm. at that as a story that has an arc right and yeah that, right 
that there's things that you keep building on and teasers and you know uh you know can you know coming up tomorrow and right those, those type of things that you're always planting seeds where people are like oh yeah, yeah, find out what happens next you know yeah. But just going back for a moment to what you mentioned is like the fact that, you know, we all receive this information differently, um, mm-hmm. slightly differently from our own um, uh, experiences and that. But also, I think today, I think there's a real challenge for communication in general, because we we also consume in different ways. Right. I mean, you said, you know, you're turning 58. I'm not going to give my age, but I'm right behind you. Um, yes. The. And the way you and I maybe consume information may be different from like the way my 18 year old son com- takes information, maybe somebody in their, th- you know, there's a lot of different and, you know, cultural. So how do you ensure that you, when you deliver your message, your story, that you make sure that it permeates all the different communication kind of um, media so that every, so that if you only like to have it through one, that you're still going to get the message? Sure. Yeah, I think a couple of things right off the bat. So, so if we we produce a lot of content. So if we're if we're producing a um, a three day summit, we might produce somewhere in the neighborhood of you know 150 pieces of media for for those three days, and those are all different types of things. Mm-hmm. But now we're looking at that media when we produce it and go, okay, is is this a three minute video that's going to play in session, and that's the only reason it's going to exist, or is this a three minute video that's going to play in session and it needs to be a 30 second spot that's going to go out on socials and is it something that's going to be inside of the app and so so what are all of the uses that we're going to have for this content before we create the content so we know what we're what what our outcomes need to be and how how we can cover all of that the other thing that i think is super important to be able to make sure that you're getting to an audience is again what i said before is listen Listen, find a, you know, an audience, I don't care what their age is, um, if they have an issue or uh, you know, a concern with an executive, with a company, with a brand, uh, with uncertainty in their future, how do you address that right out of the gate? How do you, how do you attack, that, attack that elephant in the room right from the get-go, right? Right. So as soon as is what I've what, what I've what I've experienced in my in my career is that if an audience understands that you are listening to them and you have ears to hear what their concerns are and you're willing to address that, then I now have ears to hear you. But so much of the time, if they're harboring something inside of them, those concerns, those fears, what what whatever it is. A lot of times their ears are just shut off and they're just sitting mm-hmm. in the room and they're disinterested and they're waiting for you to fail or say something stupid or something that they can go, ah, right? So I really in- try to encourage executives to go, hey, if you know that there's things that people are struggling with, let's 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 tee that up right from the get-go. Things that are afraid of, let's let's tee that up from the get-go. Let's let's do that so that we can all kind of get clear, get grounded, get on the same page, and we're in a place where we're both open to a, a two-way dialogue. Yeah, no, I I love that. And also, how do you how do you or does it change now? Say that we're in a you know we're in a volatile market right now, economic issues, all of that. Uh, do you when you work with companies, do you modify the story? Do you? I mean, what do you do in a situation like this? Because I mean, a lot of people over the last number of years have been like, oh look at us, hyper growth, um, which is uh, and people kind of latch onto that sometimes. But now it's a it's everybody's in a different kind of mindset. So how do you reorient your or reposition or maybe just tweak where you are to make sure that you're meeting people where they are? Yeah, you know, the, again, you know, coming out of the pandemic and and and. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, the, this sense of humanity. And there was a, you know, what I refer to as a massive pendulum swing, right? Right. And then there was, you know, there was a, there was a big cry out for, you know, more time for self, more uh, mm-hmm. self care, more, more, you know, you know, work, work from home, unlimited PTO, uh, you know, all, all those type of things that, you know, um, you know, and then also, you know, there was a shortage in the workplace, right? And then so all, all, there was the great, the great resignation and so then you know the the salaries and things like that were increasing by 20 25 percent overnight across the board and now we've seen that pendulum starting to come come back a little, a little bit uh, you know, mm-hmm. a little bit uh, normalization going on there so that's that's been uh you know really really um 
you know, I, I, th I think really helpful, but we can't lose sight of the things, the lessons that, that we learned because there, there are, there are some really wonderful lessons that we learned about humanity and self-care and working ourselves to death and, and what is the point of that. Mm -hmm. But we also have to balance that with, you know, work ethic. There's there's something wonderful about yeah. work ethic, right? And so you're know, trying to find find that point when you're communicating to a large uh, audience. I think that's 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 really very very important, and that that kind of comes to the the authenticity side of things, right? It's like can you can you serve both sides of of that? You know, can you can you have a, a, an organization that is about culture first and people first, right? And also make sure that people are working hard and putting out a great product that that serves the shareholders and and the brand. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's such a that's such a tough, tough challenge in, in many ways. And uh and I think the other thing too is that um you're right because I, I think what I don't like sometimes is I see a lot of organizations, I call it, they have bumper stickers, right? You know, they have the latest thing that they're, that they're focused on to make them look like they're really good, good people and all of that kind of stuff. But for me, it, it just comes off as a bumper sticker on your website or whatever. And um, because when you engage with the organization, you don't find any of these, any of their lovely values coming through in your interactions. So it's almost worse to be inauthentic and not genuine than it is, you know, just to rather than try and pretend to be what you're not. Oh yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I, I think, you know, and, but we, we've seen this, you know, happen over and over and over again. So, uh, you know, it, whatever it was, you know, 10, 15 years ago, everybody had to have a CSR play, right? What, what is your mm -hmm. corporate social responsibility? Who are yeah. you? And you know, so you just have brands picking charities or causes just to yeah. uh, you know, align themselves from a marketing perspective that really maybe isn't congruent uh, with who they are as, you know, actually a brand or as a, as an, you know, executive leadership team, because it really comes down to, you know, who's, at, who's at the top, who's making the decisions. And you know, that's really who's driving what the culture and the, and the brand stands for. So, um, and that's an interesting point too, because the people at the top of the organization sometimes, uh, they're the most difficult people to get to be able to tell a consistent story. So when you work with when you work with organizations, how do you make sure that there's a leadership alignment? Because at the end of the day, let's face it, we all take our cues from leadership. Everybody does. And if it looks important or there's a consistent message, then we'll latch on to it. But if it's inconsistent, then we'll go, well, it's not that important really what the message is, is it? Right. Yeah, we, we, um, we, we're fortunate enough to be able to work with typically the entire C-suite and mm -hmm. uh, help them in crafting their message across the board, right? So we're seeing all of the different presentations, all of the different uh, communications, and, and and we're checking for inconsistencies. And then when there is an inconsistency, just it's not our job to fix it. <clears throat> it's our job to bring it to them and say, this person says this, this person says this, what is it you want to say as a brand, right? What, what, mm -hmm. what, what is it? What is it? What is it really? You know, and uh, you know, and I, I appreciate the uh, the brands that are uh, truly authentic. You know, I've I've had brands that we've we've dealt with in the last few years where I've said, okay, so what's your stance on, you know, diversity, you know, DE and I? What, what's your stance on that? And they're like, don't have one. I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, that's you know, it's it's an authentic answer. I'd rather. Yeah. You know, I'd rather have the the true answer than a fake answer that that, that I want, wanted to hear. Yeah, yeah, one like, well, we have a we have a page on our website about that, yeah. <laughs> and that's it. That that's our that's our initiative. No, and I I agree. I I agree with you. It's getting um, it's much better if people are authentic and they say, well, well, no, I don't. I'm not focused on that right now, or I'm not focused on that. We're doing this. This is where we're focused, and this is how we do good as an organization. Whatever we're different instead of trying to hop on, whatever the latest train is. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, listen, all of David's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, David, please do tell us a little bit more about you and Go West. Sure, I'd love to. So, yeah, so Go West, we've been around this year. will be our 39th 
Wow, congratulations. <laughs> anniversary. Yeah. yeah, so I uh, started the organization uh, you know, when I was 20 years old out of my parents' garage, and it was a mobile DJ company, and we just grew up through, you know, you know, DJs to bands to audio, video, lighting, and then then it was content for the video. Then it was really getting into the what is the story and the content, and then it just became storytellers and everything else that we were about. Um, you know, really, we realized, hey, we're a creative agency, and what we're doing is we're just using all these other tools in our toolbox to tell, help tell our, our client stories, whether that's in live events or video content, television. Uh, or you know this you know traditional agency work that we do now, so um, we're located uh, here in Nashville, Tennessee, with offices in uh, in uh, Westlake Village, California, which is where we were initially headquartered for the first thirty years. And um, yeah, all of our information will be below below this video. Excellent, thank you, David. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon. Yeah.